Amen. Am I on? All right, there we go. Amen. Well, let's go ahead and pray before we look at the Word. And uh, thank you, Tim. I appreciate it. You'll be wondering for a few minutes on what I got in there. All right. Just start shaking. I, I didn't. Someone put a cat in there, and I did. Okay, I just want to make that clear. <clears throat> Lord God, we just thank you for this morning. We just thank you for for your love for each one of our lives, and uh, just thank you for your presence here this morning in in the house of miracles in this in this place, Lord God. And Lord, we we look to you, Lord God. This this morning, we look to you in our in our church, in our lives, our families. And uh, we know that nothing surprises you. You're in full control. And we, we look to you. And Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You will turn to uh, Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. We've been on a sermon series on harvest times so of Galatians 6. And uh, we'll let you know that uh, a couple weeks ago I got this... Uh, I got a new phone, and it actually went down. The price of our, month, our monthly plan went down. And the first time, it was uh, half as much. I don't know if that was a mistake or not, but I just said, praise God. All right? I, didn't, I didn't call them up and say, I think you undercharged us. I hope that's okay. Don't turn us in. We were just thank the Lord for that lower bill that month. And uh, But I was, I'm saying that because uh, I'm not calling people, I'm not texting people, I put my notes on here, saving money on ink, and just use this. All right, sound good? And uh, someone's going to check my text things uh, afterwards. I got you. All right. But listen, uh, before we get into the uh, message for today, I do, do want to remind uh, that after uh, words, we are headed over and having a picnic, outdoor luncheon, and then uh, water baptism. One year ago, Alyssa, we met her. She came here and asked, do you know? Amen. Yes. Amen. A year ago, Alyssa pulls up, we're headed over to the lake to baptize, and she goes, do you know of such and such church? I still don't know the church. Alyssa, I really don't know the church you were asking. I wasn't fibbing, okay, just so you know. And uh, we said, no, but we're doing a picnic and water baptism service. Come on. And then we get over there, and she says, well, I need to be baptized. So I talked to her, and listen, we got her done. Hey, we baptized Alyssa, and uh, amen, amen. And she's been uh, coming to us for a year now. Amen. Amen. And uh, we appreciate her. Uh, also mentioned in the pews, there is comment cards, prayer request cards. Say next, we do a weekly newsletter. If you're not getting that, I'd like to get that, give us your email, name, and so forth. And uh, we'd love for you to know what's going on and uh, see what's happening. Also, I want to mention this. Last night, I, I've been going to the prison for about 10 years, or this prison that I go to. And... Uh, a uh, friend of mine, Mike Jenkins, brought the word preached, and I kind of tailed in and finished it up. And we had about eight to ten men uh, come to salvation, repentance, amen. amen. So praise God. And uh, that's always good. And the altars were full of many others. Pray for one young man that ten years ago, when I first met, first met Melissa, I was going two or three times a week. He was a juvenile, meaning he was like 15. And so I met with him one-on-one -on -one for about nine months. And... And he got right with God, but he still had to do his time, all right? And uh, so I was able to pray with this young man as well. And uh, But right now I'm going to ask Sandy to come up, and uh, I'm going to have her. Do you still have your mic? Or, all right. And why was she fine using this mic? Yeah. All right. Just making sure there's feedback and so forth. And uh, just don't stand right in the middle, something like that. All right. And so I'm going to ask uh, she, uh, Sandy. She was... Uh, baptized a long time ago, but God has done a lot in her life, and she just felt in her heart that, that she she needed to get it done, uh, done, done, and, and, and redone. So why don't you share for just a few minutes, Andy, what God's done in your life since then and so forth. Okay. Well, good morning again, all my brothers and sisters. And uh, like Pastor Mike said, I was baptized probably 13 years ago. Bobby and I both were. But the Lord has grown me so very much in the past 13 years now, I guess it's been. And the Lord has taken me from a child, from an abusive home, you know, that I come from, from a little girl, to uh, some marriages where I, you know, my husband at the time beat me when I was pregnant. He's taken me through valleys 
but he's always been there with me, holding my hand and letting me know that he was right there with me. So I did not have to worry. But I, you know, I walk on the earth just like we all do. So there's times when I get scared or I was getting scared, but the Lord was right there with me. And so through all these valleys and stuff I was going through, and even facing a demon in my room, one-on-one, face-to-face with the demon. At that time, I was so scared. I couldn't couldn't move. I was so scared because I had never, never, ever had anything like that happen to me. But I come face-to-face with the demon, and that demon was trying to kill me. He was trying to kill me. And so being that scared, all I, I, I couldn't move, and I, I, I was terrified. And I thought, God help me. The moment I thought in my head, God help me, it was gone. And that thing was trying to electrocute me throughout the night by a cord that was in bare water that was under my back. But the reason being is because that demon knew that I was going to preach God's word someday. Yes. And then I was going to show people what God can do in their life. We may be small, but our God is big. And he can create something out of nothing. He spoke the world into existence. So God can do this in your life. So he brought me through through the valleys and through bad marriages where I was beaten while I was pregnant. And I finally said, Lord, I want a man in my life. I said, could you please give me a good man? Well, I met my husband, Bobby. Amen, amen. And he put Bobby in my life. And I thank God for my husband, Bobby. Because Bobby's been with me now for 15 years. We've known each other for 16 years. And, uh, you know, we've been through a lot. You know, we've almost lost our home a couple of times. And uh, God has always been there. And he picked us up. Amen. Even when faith, you know, we had to rely on just faith only. Faith only to get us through. I believe what my God said, and his word is truth. And I stood on that truth. We did not lose our home. And God has has brought us, and he has blessed us, and blessed us, and blessed us. And he's also given me my own ministry. I'm so humbled to be a servant of his that he gave me my own ministry. It's to help abused women. It's called Shelter from the Storm of Life. So for the, and also to, to be an intercessory prayer warrior and to be the prayer leader here at this church. No, and I am so humbled by that. I could not have done this 10 or 15 years ago. I couldn't stand up here. I'd be shaking like a leaf, you know, like I don't know what to say. But God, when, when I was baptized, the heavens opened up and the Holy Spirit came on me. And he, he is incensed and has grew me and walked with me hand in hand to where I am now. So I'm able to speak God's word in front of my friends and even of people I don't know, strangers. Because my God is true. God loves me. He loves all of us. No matter what we do, God still loves us. No matter what. And he's in my life and everybody's life. We just if we open our ears and our hearts to hear him and to walk with him. There's no greater, greater reward in the whole world. Thank you. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Hey, Bobby, I'm not sure if I hit record on the disc. Uh, if I... No. So, but uh, anyway, it's like Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, if you'll be there, that is the key passage uh, that we're using. And saying, praise God, that God, the, the power of, the, of God, the power of the gospel, the good news, is that God t- takes someone with uh, a uh, bad hair upbringing and brings them from being all messed up to blessed up, being transformed. And I know that's the case with many of us in this room about being changed and touched. Yeah. So as we're looking, I just want to re- refresh, recap, re- remind us that the enemy will attack discourage and come against great vision, seeds and crops to start up the harvest. And uh, we'll go on and mention a few things later in the message, but think about this. The enemy wants, wants us to give up before the harvest comes. And it's time for the harvest. I believe that we're on the brink of harvest in many of our lives. Uh, many of us have felt that we're at uh, the, uh, the 11.59 hour 
But he will, and listen to this, the enemy will try to get us off track for us to stop seeing it. Amen. But God would have us to start seeing it and speaking it. Every great victory will see great battles. In Matthew 7, this is a reminder, in Matthew 7, it talks about foundation. Now, I listened to Bobby. This is just a reminder, setting up a reminder. Listen, sand is good for a few things, building sand castles, all right? Sand boxes. I've seen some beautiful sand castles. But man, the water comes up, all right? But listen, you can't throw any seeds on cement. They're not going to grow. You're not going to put any seeds on this car, they're not going to grow. You can put some seeds in this soil that, that I found in our garage, and you got a better chance. But listen, uh, part of what I have in this box, uh, last night on the way home from uh, the prison, I got Miracle Grow, all right? So, <laughs> some Miracle Grow. And some of us need some Miracle uh, Grow in our lives spiritually. It says here, Tim, help me out. Is this true for fast root development? Sure, why not? Is that, you know, so if you use this stuff, this thing will have supersonic speed. The roots will take place faster with Miracle Grow. So, honey, I got us some Miracle Grow for the next plant that we use or get. Or, um, I think we'll have a better chance it'll live longer. We, um, I don't have a green thumb. Uh, I buy Melissa flowers, but I don't plant them to grow myself, all right? And uh, that would be a miracle. But, uh, you know, I brought her some flower go and said, praise God for you and the little one. And I bought enough flowers and Caitlin, actually Caitlin brought them in and gave them to, to Melissa. All right, that was cute. Was that a good strategy on, on the daddy here? All right. So... Understand this is the truth is it takes time to for us or for for gardening for the roots to to take place for a tree to grow roots and for a good foundation. But it's always nice to see some miracles. All right, so Bobby, I got the miracle grow. All right, all right. He's been uh, messing me. I was driving home at ten thirty. I kept hearing Bobby's voice. Miracle grow. Miracle grow. Miracle grow. <laughs> and in our lives here today. We have many that need some miracle growth. What is that? That's when, yes, you've been doing some of the right stuff, and then but sometimes maybe you've been you've messed up. Maybe you just haven't learned all you need to learn. But then God exponentially miracle grows you faster than you expect in a spurt. Amen. That's a God thing. I'll be honest, uh, Tim, you can read this better than me if you were. I'm not gonna have you read it. So we did Scott's long service. We started doing it about six months out. I don't know how long ago. They really knocked at the door on a Friday. That kind of the right moment. Our yard looks better. It doesn't look all the way there, but it's better. Is it not maybe it's better? That turf? Not, not totally, but they gave us like all this run now. You should do this, you should choose this, but it looks better, it's green. And so, here you go, I'll put that on the mirror growth. So maybe the our yard will just kind of miraculously get better as, it, as well, all right? So amen, and uh, as you look at today, Galatians 6, 4 through 9, I put both full text, Matthew 12, 13, 24 through 30, 36 through 43. I'm only gonna have us read 6, 4 through 9 for today. <clears throat> Each one should test his own actions. Then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to somebody else. For each one should carry his own load. Anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good things with his instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Now we've uh, been doing, a, this is a series, and so for 
This uh, morning we're looking at overcoming a drought. Overcoming a drought. I believe in this this sanction, this morning gathered together, many of us, and some of us are in a, a drought where we feel like we've been pushing through. We, we've been uh, putting some miracle grow down and we're, we're believing for a miracle, but we, we've also maybe felt a little empty. Maybe we've been feeling a little bit like we're, we're knocking our head against a wall or we're feeling a drought. And so I'm going to mention a, a few items, but the last part of the message is the main part I want you to really catch. But first, first point is crops, seeds. Reiterating this from last week, it's that important. Galatians 6, 4, each one should test their own actions, then they can take pride in themselves alone. Crops. Psalms 139, 23, search me God and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. The one thing that I, more, more than anything that I've learned from reading the life of Jesus this year, over the last uh, four or five months, when I've read those, that part of scripture that I'm amazed about was the Palm Sunday to Easter, is that Jesus didn't waver about what people thought or the circumstances of life. But Jesus did what he was supposed to do. He, he, he kept moving forward in life, regardless of circumstances, regardless of what people thought. He responded, but he didn't react. And so what I would encourage us is, in all of us, is to search our hearts. To see within us is, is part of the reason we have a drought. Is it partly because... Uh, so we're, we're searching at the wrong things. We're, we're looking for approval from people. What, we need to say, is my focus on pleasing God? Is my focus on being in His presence and being renewed? Search my heart, O oh God. Show me any wicked way. If you've not been seeing the right harvest, check the crops, the seeds that we're planting, the seeds in our life. Secondly, Problem of pest. Problem of pest. Now, listen, I want, it could be this, but I'm going to be, and, and it could be the scripture, and there's other scripture, but don't go like this, all right? Don't go like this right now, or, or well, you know, some other point, you know, all right? Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. I'm believing that we're in good company in this room, amen? In this sanctuary. So the pest we're believing is not in this room. If there is a pest in this room, we're believing that they're going through a trial and God is going to deliver everyone in this room. Amen? But as I was uh, looking at the problem of pest, I, uh, I did got some uh, research and, and I learned that there's many types of pests or things that will hurt a harvest, will hurt a garden. Um, I found out that there is one that a garden, gardener or what not I would think is a pest, it's, it's a weed, it's a type of weed, a Bermuda grass, apparently is strong, it's like a string, it's, it's hard to get rid of, it would actually, it's a feisty Bermuda grass, but do we know that, that they use it in, in golf, a golf uh, ground for grass? Do we know that sometimes it could be, uh, uh, the pest could be the fact that that light, how much light, not enough light, how, uh, what kind of light can affect crops. I learned uh, this past week that, that cat uh, caterpillars can be pests to, to cabbage, but amazingly, they like to, actually green beans, excuse me. Is that right, Tim? Green beans? Well, uh, like to eat part of the leaves of green beans, but, but you know, in actuality, is they, they don't mess up the part that we like. So they, we share, right? Us and the caterpillars, we share, right? The, the crops, okay? And uh, so understand this, there's many other problems, pests, weeds that challenge our gardener. You have to be persistent when you're truly going to be a green thumb person, all right? And, uh, and there's some things that, that you learn for your area. But as we look at this, I want us to think about our own lives, because there can be pests in our own lives. Matthew 12, 39 through 29, 30, it says, No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot, uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. 
At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. And if you understand this, as I have heard when God is doing a, a special work, I've heard of even a new God revivals that people would say, well, that's, that's of the flesh. Well, understand this. I want us to catch this as, if God is touching messed up people, and we're all messed up a little bit, we're all growing, we're all moving forward in life, then yes, there will be some stuff that won't be all perfect, because we're not perfect. But as we're moving forward, we'll see God touch and transform. And then there'll be some, as this scripture talks about, and, and some of what I learned this past week in little, a literal uh, crops, garden crops, is that sometimes the 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 weeds will grow next to the crops, and and you have to uh, you have to break them up after it's time for harvest. At that time, you separate them. And so we're understanding this in our own lives. We're moving forward, regardless of where somewhere out, someone out, regardless of where they are. We're moving forward. Amen. And we'll love each other. I'll love you. You'll love me. No, we're not going to sing the dinosaur song, if you remember that. But we are moving forward. Amen? Amen. And, amen. Let's, amen. let's give the Lord a hand. Yes. Amen. And saying that, we give, we'll give grace to one another. We'll love one another. And we'll understand just because we might be further along in an area doesn't mean that they are, but they might be further along than us. But we're going to love each other. And no, uh, we're going from messed up to blessed up. All right, blessed up. And uh, the newsletter last week, I put the whole version of that and the short version. And uh, I was talking about kissing frogs. I didn't bring frogs. They're not in here, okay? Just in case you were nervous, I did not put frogs in here. I saw someone, huh? All right. But think about this. Is I want you to catch this. Is a... Uh, as I take this off, that in our own lives, that, that sometimes we allow, we allow our uh, pests to get on our own lives. We allow stuff to stay in our own lives that will hinder us overcoming a drought. And the first one uh, that I think of as a, oh, I'll do the one that I pulled up. Uh, actually, I, I will grab the other one. All right. Is pride. Sometimes we will allow pride to get in the way of moving forward on what God wants. It will cause a drought in our life. And uh, is that true? Amen? Yes. Amen. And so, this is pretty cool, isn't this? I thought this was cool. Yes. And so what happens, I just put just a little bit of this uh, food coloring, and you already can see that yellow drooping down, right? Going down and changing the color of this. But think about this. Is sometimes we can allow pride. I'm not going through that again. I'm not going to allow someone to hurt, you know, I'm not going to allow, a, listen, I'm too good for that, I'm too good, you know, God, uh, you, if you're not going to do it fast enough, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm tired of this, uh, you know, it might be, uh, whatever it may be, but we, sometimes we can allow pride to get within our lives, and it will hinder a harvest, it will hinder us from truly growing and moving forward, overcoming a drought. And as we're looking at this, uh, one thing that will truly hinder us is finances. How many, I think, well, no one raise your hand. I think everyone will raise your hand probably. Mm -hmm. Adults in the room. The finances can wear us down, can weigh us down. When there, when there comes a unexpected bill, look at that, it was totally clear. Look what happens. And you get that bill that's $1,000 instead of 100 Or maybe it's, uh, you know, tens of thousands. Maybe when I first started the ministry, I didn't know that I was self-employed or I didn't understand that concept. And uh, I got a pretty hefty IRS bill. They found me out, the IRS. I had to give Caesar, what was Caesar's, I guess? What does that say? And uh, imagine they said, Pastor Mark, we found you. Yeah. I heard you've been doing some good work this year in Tallahassee, Florida. Here's your bill. All right. <clears throat> but money can weigh us down. Is it not true? Uh, 
And, but I want to mention that when I first started the ministry, I was in my home church in Orlando where I grew up. And would you not know that someone gave, I didn't tell them, I didn't put, you know, they didn't have Facebook or Twitter or all that stuff. But somebody put in an envelope the exact amount of cash I, I needed to pay you totally bill. Amen? Yes, amen? It was pretty, I like, whoa, God thing. Yes. And there has been times, I'm not going to tell you every time um, I've, I've got an envelope from someone or something. <laughs> that hadn't happened every time. Sometimes I had to pinch the penny and pray to come in in a couple of days or, or whatnot or go without something, right? Someone's done that. Is that true in here? Think about this. So some of us in here, you've gotten a little bit hopeless. You've gotten a little discouraged. Maybe even a little bit down, depressed, and just wondering. So I use blue. I thought kind of you're in the blues, okay? Yes. And uh, and so look, what happens? You're clear. See, when it's clear, what are you doing? You're giving it all to God. Amen. We're not meant to carry the load. It's, it's, it's on God's hands. It's His load. When we say, I like what, what you said, Cindy, a few minutes ago, is, man, you give it all to him, he, he comes through. Look at that. But then we start seeing the weight. We start feeling the blues when we get a little bit down. We start seeing that. We start getting a, a check or someone, we have a good day, and we're still like, oh, I don't know. We were in the blues. Maybe that's some here today. Maybe that's some that are watching by video, not live yet, but by uh, by YouTube. Maybe you feel like you you don't know how you're gonna get through this, and it's just you're down emotionally, you're down discouraged. But I want to tell you that I'm excited because listen, God is He's ready to overfill every one of us. He's ready to just fill us with heavenly water. Bring down, bring down. Right, Leslie? She hit me up uh, on the Facebook. She had her umbrella. She was ready for this morning. Some of us, though, are full of unforgiveness or bitterness. Somebody's unfairly done stuff to every one of us. Life has hit us unfairly. Listen, life, nowhere in the Bible do I hear the words, life is fair. I don't see that term. It does say that God loves us. He loves us all. He's fearfully and wonderfully made us, but I don't see life as fair. It makes me think of that story I shared. And so I'm thinking about this because we want to pray that our hearts are healed. And this is red. I want to think about that. I believe there's some of us that maybe we're weighing in saying, I, I'm not going to let that happen to me again. That person hurt me. I'm not going to let it happen from them. I'm not going to let it happen from that type of person. And we're, we got bitterness in our heart. But you know, I believe there's some of us that are, yes, I'm not going to tell the whole rainbow story, but I brought my umbrella again last from your comment. But we're believe, listen, today, this, this morning, we need that drop of rain to hit our umbrella. We're opening it up just with a, a little bit of a mustard seed of faith. Just a little glimpse. James 5.18, it says, Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. Elijah. And uh, we're going to watch this clip in jest here in a moment. But listen, I, I don't know if you noticed, I've left the tops off of these waters. And when you go up and pray and start dancing, uh, be careful. But uh, we might have colored carpet. All right, that might be fun. We'll remember this message forever. All right. But listen, this is just a few examples. We might be in a dark moment in our lives and just feel on what's it going to take? I want to tell you what it's going to take. It's going to take miracle to grow. It's going to take miracle, not holy, holy water, in a sense. Yes, it's going to take heavenly water. Now lift the caps off because, see, some of us have the caps on. We're refusing we're refusing heavenly water. We're saying, no, no. I'm just going to hold on to my, my pain. I'm going to hold on to my stuff. I'm not saying, take the cap off. Be in my presence. And allow me to do the work in your heart. 
And so as you watch this video, or think of think of this as you hear this this brother to, uh, to showing the rest of the illustration. Amen. Amen. Hey everybody, this is your friend and your brother, Elder Ferris Long. Listen, I was on the phone yesterday with my mom. Many of you know I like sharing videos to encourage people. And I was talking to my mom, a powerful woman of God, and she was talking to me about an analogy that she shared with someone at her house uh, yesterday to encourage them. And when she shared it with me, it really touched me and I felt led to share it here on Facebook and actually do a demonstration of the analogy because Somebody has been praying about some dark situations. You're out there, you've been praying about dark situations in your life, and it seems like no matter how much you've been praying, nothing's been working. Well, I want to encourage you. The Lord told me to tell you today, keep praying. It's all going to become clear real soon. So here's the analogy. Amen. You see this bottle right here? This bottle right here represents the dark situations of your life. It represents the dark stuff that you're facing right now. And notice that on the top of this bottle is a bottle cap. The Lord says in order for him to really begin to do the work that you want done, and the thing that you've been praying about, you need to take the top off. In other words, God says, take the limitations off. You're expecting God to do it a certain way. You're expecting him to answer you in certain ways. But God says, take the limitations off. Take the limitations of your mindset. Take the limitations of your belief system of whether God can actually work a miracle for you and trust him. Take the limits off. Number two, you see this water? This water represents prayer. And this is what you've been doing. You've been praying and praying. And because everything still looks dark, you feel like, what's the use? And you give up. The number one reason why people are defeated is because they stop praying too soon. But I got news for you. The Lord told me to tell you, keep praying. And before long, what you've been praying about, it can't stay dark too long. You keep pouring your faith in God on your situation. Keep pouring your hope, your prayers, your thoughts, your belief. Stand on it. Stop backing down. Keep pouring into it. Because uh, after a while, what was dark won't be dark anymore. You'll be able to look at your life, look at the situations that you've been praying about. It may take a moment, just like this is. And you get discouraged when you've been praying and praying and praying and praying and you get discouraged. But sometimes you've got to be patient and keep praying about it. I know people tell you, don't keep praying about stuff. You know, man, that means you don't, that means you don't believe God. Actually, the fact that I keep praying means that I know that he's the only one who can do it. And if you keep praying long enough, before long, what was dark will become clear to you. If this video bless you, share it with somebody else. Let them know. God's going to do what he said. Before long, your dark situation will become clear. Amen, amen. <clears throat> amen, that's what we're believing for is clear. And uh, that's when we're in total, uh, in God's presence and allowing him to hear it all. Allowing it all be on, on him and just obeying him. To being oh happy. All right, amen. And so uh, I'm going to pray. And uh, Tim, do you want to just run for us tomorrow? Appreciate Appreciate Tim. He, he gave me some wisdom with uh, understanding crops and gardening. And uh, thank you. So I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask whether you want to stay in your seat or find a place up here. I do think there's something special about coming forward and find a place. I will say this, if you you need to repent before the Lord, if you need to just ask God to forgive you from anything you've been holding on to and you've held the caps down, held the cap on your life for that area, I encourage you to come forward and just give it all to Jesus. But we're going to believe not only that we're cleansed 
these different things and other things. So we're going to believe that you saw that when he turned that on full blast, it was overflowing. Amen. And we're just going to be overfilled with God's love, overfilled with yes. his joy, his peace. Yes. Lord, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you love us. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that we don't have to carry the load. I thank you, Lord God, that you have all things in control. I thank you, Lord God, that you're working all things out in your perfect time and in your perfect peace. And Lord, I just pray for all of us that we would leave the weight of the world at your feet and we would have the joy of you, the peace of you and your love. I pray for anyone of us that needs to ask for your forgiveness. Any one of us that needs to just cry before you, anyone of us needs to be refreshed by you, that this day we would not leave out of these doors without doing so. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll spend a few moments in, in prayer, and we're going to leave out of these doors celebrating to that part. Amen.